Welcome. Thanks for showing up. I'm Wayne Martin. And I'm Freddie Martin. And thanks for showing up for the three day Find Your Soulmate Challenge. So, hey, where are you coming from? Type in the city you're you're watching, you're watching from. We'd like to find out. Let us know. Yeah. Great. All right. Everybody's logging in. It's going to take a minute. We're going to start in a couple minutes. We're from Redding, California, Northern California, if you're wondering where we're broadcasting from. It's great. All right. So we just had a couple of questions. We thought if you want to put in the chat, uh, put in one if you are currently single and looking to date. Put in two if you're actually in a relationship and you're just trying to figure out if it's one you want to continue on with or if, if it works for you. And then put in three if you're looking for your soulmate. Are you committed to that, a lifelong relationship? So type in one for looking, two for in a relationship, trying to figure it out, and three that you are totally committed to finding your soulmate and you will not be denied. You will not be denied. And that's part of the things that we're going to be talking about over the next three days. You know, we just want to talk a little bit about our mission. Um, the mission is really to help 10,000 people find the love of their life and then help them build a long-term loving relationship. Uh, it's so incredible to have that. Um, I know for many of us, we've had uh, committed relationships that didn't turn out and, you know, it's just so difficult. And so we've spent the last 29, 30 years, you know, working on figuring this out so that the average person can really find the love of their life find their soulmate and really build a committed long-term loving relationship through thick and thin. And so, you know, we're hoping that you're going to take this journey with us for the next three days. We're going to have a lot of great, exciting information. Um, we're also going to have some exercises that you're going to really enjoy doing. It's really going to help you in a lot of ways. So hopefully, hopefully, We'll be um, getting started in just a minute. Why don't we take a minute and talk about um, a little bit of the divorce statistics and, and why this is so important. One of the things that when we started researching it out, 42% of pretty much all marriages uh, don't make it. That's an incredible number. Mm -hmm. And then you go into the second marriage and that's 60% of those marriages don't make it. And then 72% of the third marriages don't make it. And so it's, um, those are staggering statistics. Yes, they are. But what we really want to let you know is there's tremendous hope. There it's, is. There's tremendous hope. So, uh, Freddie, let's talk a little bit about our history and, and why we know that there's hope for anybody that's really looking for that special person to build that long-term rela relationship. Well, we're really passionate about bringing this information out to people because we have spent years and years, hundreds of thousands of dollars and lots of time learning these secrets that we've uh, boiled it down to fairly simple steps, not easy, but simple and ways that you can actually find that soulmate and stay with them because Wayne is my fourth husband. I had three prior marriages. I was not very good about choosing my partners. And then finally, when my third divorce, I just looked at myself in the mirror and went, you're the problem. <laughs> you were the constant and all of those relationships and you need to get it figured out. Because for me, my lifetime goal, my bucket list ever since I was a little girl was to have a loving relationship. I saw my parents, they really loved each other. They were very passionate about each other. And I went, oh, this should be easy, not a problem. So I just... <laughs> That's what I wanted in life. So I just jumped in and got married as a teenager and had three kids and had a divorce and then immediately got attached to another man. And we were together for almost eight years and that didn't work. And then I had a very short three and a half month relationship that was met, married, divorced. And that's when I was finally in enough pain. I was in so much 
agony and pain that I decided I was going to get it figured out. And that's what we've been doing. Yeah. So my background, Freddie is my third significant relationship. I was married before once for nine years. And then um, after that, if, broke apart. We had two young boys and that was super difficult, just gut riching. It was just horrible. It wasn't that we weren't great people, but we didn't have um, certain skills that you need in order to make it through the thick and thin of relationship. So right after that, I definitely, um, within six months, um, moved in with somebody else. We had a blended family and that turned out to be a dumpster fire and a train wreck. And it was just terrible. It's like, I got to figure this out. I grew up in a family where my parents uh, were really devoted to each other. They were very passionate. They had this incredible relationship. They went through a lot of ups and downs. And I thought, wow, okay, this, you just find somebody that you're attracted to and that you have a lot in common and it's all going to work out. Well, that's not really the case. Yeah. And I had an example with my grandparents. They went through the depression. They lost everything. They, they had, um, you know, death in the family around them and all these different things. They were able to make it. They were their soulmates. And so I thought, wow, there's got to be a way. There's hope. And, but I didn't know what that was. And so we went out there and really figured it out. We really want to share that with you because it's pretty exciting. There is hope. I don't care how many failed relationships you have, where you're at, whether you're just starting out, which is super important, um, or whether you're in a relationship and you're trying to figure out, is this the one? Or maybe you feel like it's the one, but you really don't know all the different things that you need to know in order to make that turn into that long-term fulfilling, incredible relationship that you can make it through thick and thin because thick and thin, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Yeah. So... You know, one of the things, too, about divorce or separation is all the costs that you go through. And anybody that's had a significant relationship that has failed knows the emotional toll, the physical toll, the mental toll. Um, financial. You know, financial, career. I mean, you could lose children. children, you know, the breakup and how difficult it is. So. Taking it one step at a time is super, super important. We're going to go through that. Um, for instance, most of us, a lot of us, let's say, um, you know, we, we meet somebody. Oh, the romance starts. And then we start sharing. But then we start oversharing, if you know what I mean. And then we make a commitment and we don't even know if we're compatible. Right. And so then we're trying to figure it out. And then we don't have communication skills that we like. We don't really know where that other person is. We don't know how to give them love. They don't know how to give us love in the way that we can feel it and the way that we can grow with it. And so those are the things that we're really going to talk about today. We're going to jump into the compatibility component. That's a great place to start. We're going to just start with some basic fundamentals about compatibility. Obviously, we don't have hours and hours to go through this like if we were in a master class, but we're going to give you some tools, tips, and some homework to develop your skills so you can go, wow, I know who that person is. I know how to I know how they're going to interact with me or how I should interact with them. And so it's going to going to be really great. And I just wanted to mention that that Wayne and I have been married 29 years. Yes. Yes. So it's like <laughs> It really does work. It works. And and when we both started on our journey, he was on his journey to figure out how he was going to get the relationship he wanted. I was on mine. We were actually really good friends for a year and a half before we actually turned to each other and went, oh, I think you're the one. Because <laughs> <laughs> we were just like buddies. And that's the thing. That's where the hope is. And we have all kinds of great tools and tips and secrets that will help you Sometimes that person that you're supposed to be with that will be your loving partner for life is right there next to you and you just don't recognize them. They don't quite fit what you thought they were supposed to be. And this, this program, these classes will help you to be more open to looking for other more possibilities. More possibilities. And it's going to help you 
figure out what is a no-go early on, who should remain a friend and not really an intimate relationship before you get overcommitted and you know have a lot of heartache. So it's like protecting your heart, but in a healthy way. So let's see. Let's get let's, started. Let's get started. All right. Here we go. And Okay. All right. So, um, compatibility profiling, um, super, super important. Like we talked about, we're going to cover what we call the big four. Then we're going to talk about introversion and extroversion and partners, uh, how to identify using NLP. Which we're is gonna... neuro linguistic programming, if you yeah. don't know what that stands for. Yeah, neuro linguistic programming. Yeah. Super important. Uh, these are very basic skills to be able to look at that. We're also going to talk about lifestyle, super important, and different preferences that you're going to have. We'll have some homework assignments like, like we talked about. You're going to really enjoy those. It's going to be fun. Uh, it's going to be fun. And the thing that's so cool about pro profiling for compatibility is you're going to use this in every aspect of your life. You can use it in your family, you'll definitely use it in uh, business. It will really help you. It might even advance your career. Having these skills is pretty incredible. Uh, but family and then being able to really connect with people uh, their way at their level and build instant rapport, super, super important. So let's get started. Let's look at the first thing, which is the big four. So having a basic understanding of what people want and need when they're making a connection is people want to be seen, people want to be heard, people want to be understood, and people want to be valued. You, throughout this three days, we want you to always reflect on that. Am I seeing somebody? Am I hearing them? Am I seeking to understand? Am I value? Do I value what they're saying? Now, that doesn't mean you have to agree with them at all, but are you valuing that relationship for a different perspective? And on your side of it, when you're meeting somebody and you're getting to know them, it's important that you pay attention and go, do I feel, feel seen? Are they hearing me? Are they understanding me and are they valuing me? Because it goes both ways. Absolutely, it goes both ways. And, and you'll definitely need that in a relationship, as you know. Yeah. So let's start with um, intro, introverts and extroverts. Yeah. So Freddie. Okay, so this is a pretty easy one to figure out. Um, sometimes the introverts will fool you a little bit because they might have learned over the years to be more extroverted when they're in a group. Um, it's important that that you know if they're an introvert because they need a lot of recharging time. They need to be alone. I have friends that are extremely social. They they're salespeople. They can be out there, but boy, I'll tell you what, they they spend days just going. I'm not talking to anybody. I'm not getting on the phone. I want to be alone. And that's and that's a, an important for you to know that because if you are an extrovert and you like to talk a lot and like to have a lot of activity and go out and do things and you fall in love with an introvert, then you are going to have to be able to respect that in that person and vice versa. When you are with, you are an introvert and you find yourself really attracted to this extrovert, there's going to have to be some boundaries put up there so that you can get your recharging time. Right. It, it's something that you really want to talk about uh, with the introvert and the extrovert, because when you get into the phase of um, what they call psychologists call or family therapists call it the, the power struggle. So so let's back up for a second. So relationships are kind of built with romance. You go through the power struggle into stability, into bliss. Um, so there's that transition. So what's really important is get ahead of it. Start really taking a look at your partner and start having some deep discussions about, you know, what it takes to make that relationship work over time. Because you will have, if, if you, what you're looking for is you're, you're looking to get ahead of the, the, 
the fights actually. Yeah, I the mean, arguments. If you want to say, and, you know, get ahead of where you're not going to agree. So if you have like an extrovert, a lot of my friends are expert in myself included is that I think out loud. So I'm just mumbling to myself all the time talking and introvert, they're going to, uh, keep that into themselves and they'll make decisions over time where an extrovert is more ready, more often they'll make a quick decision. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. So obviously an introvert is going to think before they speak. Um, we talk out loud. We're both extroverted. If you can't tell, yeah. <laughs> um, takes time to make decisions, need some data a lot of times, or they need to feel it, uh, work through it. It's not a quick decision. Um, so there's just a lot of different things. Um, I would say that introverts are a lot of times very internally self-aware, um, where us extroverts, you know, it's like squirrel. Yeah. You know, we're, 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 sometimes it's really like, oh, you know, there's all these things going on and we're easily distracted. Um, and the other thing too is that an introvert is not going to be as good a communicator. They're going to uh, be more careful about saying what they're thinking and feeling. And as an extrovert, you need to give them that grace. Let them have that time to be able to feel through it, think through it, and um, be, come to you. So anyway, that we're just talking about that's that's a very, very important observation to make when you're getting to know somebody as a potential partner and for you to understand which one of those you are. Absolutely. So let's talk about identifying your uh, NLP profile. So Freddie, you're really good at this. I'm good at this. Really yeah. good at yeah, this. I've studied this. We actually, Wayne and I both studied to be a hypnotherapist. We never did do it, but mm -hmm. it did teach us a lot about communication and how to communicate with people. So in the world, we people have different ways of taking in information, being educated. Like our school system is pretty much built to teach visual girls. Visual people, 60, 65% of the population, they're visual. We take in information by seeing. And, and visual people use the language of, oh, I see what you're saying. And, oh, look at this. Do you see that? And do you see the this and see that it's it's like they that's how you can kind of identify them a visual person they also have really really quick minds they're they think one thought to the next really quickly so if you are not visual and you're trying to understand what this visual person is saying and they're moving around from thought to thought before they complete it just be aware of that <laughs> <laughs> it, it can be challenging <laughs> It's and, pretty, it's pretty funny. My sister is a very visual person yes. and that conversation is like riding a bunkin Bronco. Oh, it is wow. insane at times, but because I'm very visual, I can follow her. It's kind of bizarre, but if you put her in with somebody that is auditory or kinesthetic, um, it's irritating. It's going to be pretty <laughs> irritating. It's irritating. I love her to death. And they're also, they, you know, they, they have great imaginations. They um, prefer graphics. They like to learn, but you know, they want the graphics. That's how they're going to learn. So 65% of the population, your chances of meeting, being highly visual or meeting another visual person is very high. We do have all three of these modalities and we use them at different times. Like when you are feeling extremely emotional and you have deep feelings, then you'll go into the kinesthetic mode, which we'll talk about in a minute. So the next portion of the population, 30% is auditory. And those are people that have very modulated speaking voices. A lot of the announcers are auditory. A lot of people, singers are auditory and they take in information through the ears. So for myself personally, I'm pretty much visual auditory. I actually use my auditory a lot. And they also like a lot of information and they're usually more logical. The, you have the visual, they're more like, oh, let's just do it. <laughs> and then the auditory is going to be more like, well, let's think about that for a minute. We need some data here. We need some data. I, I must review. <laughs> yeah, I must review and look at this picture. Yeah, 
is this going to work out? Oh, okay. I have a lot of questions. Yeah, I have a lot of questions. I have a lot of questions. And then like in our business, because uh, we have a sales business and for us, when we're selling to people, we will pay attention to these modalities because if we have somebody who's auditory, we know we're going to have to have a whole bunch of information for them. Right. Lots and, of statistics. And what's really interesting too is um, visual, auditory, kinesthetic. You know, we are a combination, but we have our primary, but a lot of times our partner is going to be the opposite. And there's a lot of reasons for that. And, and it's really important and great that we're all different because we bring different things to the table which can become a strength as a couple and even a superpower oh, so absolutely. don't don't think that any one of these is better than the other it, it, it's really not true it's just understanding and being able to build rapport and connect on a deeper level because you can enter their world consciously and connect and be very respectful create trust and safety which we'll get into to later uh, because that's super important um, when you're meeting people and you're looking for that soulmate. And we'll, we'll get into that later. And then another way you can identify, uh, like another way to identify as a visual is visual walks really fast because their brain's moving and they usually lean forward when they walk. Which So it's very interesting. You can see somebody come into the room and go, oh, there's a visual. And they have a, a lot of high energy. So then you get to the auditory and their energy is more modulated. It's not as high. Or reserved. Or reserved. And then they will walk in slowly and more gracefully. And they will use, uh, hear what you're saying, got it. That's an auditory. Hear what you're saying, listen to this all that kind of stuff. And they want, they like to learn by, um, uh, what do you call it? When people are talking to you, Lecture, <laughs> lectures, lectures. They love lectures. Yeah, they like lectures. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. And then like the kinesthetic, those are the people that's a very, there's not much population, there's 5%. And they have to feel everything through their body. They are very low energy. Sometimes if you'll get a kinesthetic person on the phone, which I've happened, have happened to me when I have a business call, is that they'll say, hi, this is George. Uh, and I'll go, did they just fall asleep on the other side? It's like you have to be very respectful to kinesthetic people because their process is extremely slow. They use a lot of ums and ahs. They like comfort. They want to be comfortable. It's all about feeling through their body. And so when they get information, they have to literally process it through their body before it comes out of their mouth. And it can be extremely frustrating to people who are in a relationship with a kinesthetic person if they don't respect that. Like both my parents were kinesthetic and I finished all their sentences. It was like, oh, he means to say this and she's going to say that because I was just like, I can't wait that long for it to get up as now. a kid, as a kid. And that is just a horrible thing to do to kind of stay. It's person. pretty disrespectful. It's very disrespectful. You don't want to be there. The other thing about kinesthetic is, is now when we're talking about these percentages, that is like a pure kinesthetic person to be 5% of the population. Yeah. The reality is most of us that do sports, do things, are very kinesthetic, along with whether we're auditory or, or visual. Yeah. I mean, if you do sports or anything that's physical like that, um, you're definitely kinesthetic. Yeah. Like Joe Montana, you know, he's highly kinesthetic. If you guys know who that is, a quarterback for the 49ers. Old timey. Old timey. And then, he, <laughs> then they wanted him to go and be an announcer to be a sports announcer. Well, that's an auditory person. Well, he's highly kinesthetic. And when they put him in that position as announcer, he totally failed. It was not where he needed to be. And another story I wanted to tell really quickly is that I was teaching this class to a group of salespeople. And I got a call the next day from this lady. She was sobbing on the phone. And she said, oh my gosh, my husband and I have been married 40 years. I am highly visual. He is highly kinesthetic. I had no idea why we couldn't quite communicate properly, why we had so much frustration over 40 years. So she went home and she sat in his lap and gave him a hug and said, I love you so much and you are my rock. And she said it completely changed her marriage. 
completely changed it. From then on, I would see her once in a while, she'd give me the thumbs up and she was just like, it's just been heaven. We understand each other. He lets me go off on my tangents and doesn't get mad anymore. And if I need something from him, I sit with him, I hug him, I talk to him, I talk slow, and it's just changed completely their relationship. It's a fantastic, you know, having, having this knowledge and using it and building that skill set is so important because it isn't just going to be the person you fall in love with. It's going to be the people, their family, your kids, the people, your friends, you can connect on such a deeper level. It's just, it's such a fantastic thing. Um, sadly, because we don't have all the time in the world and it takes, there's this whole other level of understanding um, compatibility that goes deeper. This is like um, kind of the basics, the foundational stuff that you can start using today. And it's super important. It's effective. Too. It's very effective, very effective. We're going to go on to the next one. Uh, we talked about the potential conflicts that, that could arise. Um, I don't think we need to truly go over that anymore, but it's, it's very important to understand that, especially when you're looking to make a commitment and start having some conversations about that. If you're in a re relationship where you're going to be committed, you're really figuring out that they're the one, they are your soulmate potentially. You can be very different. Um, it doesn't mean that they're not your soulmate. It just means you need to be aware and have a plan about the future and how you, you're going to deal with it and, and navigate those waters through the relationship. So the next one is super, super important. Lifestyle. Lifestyles. That's a biggie. That is the biggie. And, and you need to be aware of it because for myself personally, and I've been this way all my life at nine o'clock rolls around. I'm going, can I go to bed now? I am just, I am not a night person. And then if you aren't a night person or you are a night person, if you don't connect that way, like I have lots of friends, Wayne stays up later than I do. Some of them, they're like are majorly opposite, like really goes to bed early and gets up really early. And the other person, they pass each other in the hallway as the other <laughs> one's going to bed. Yeah. It's like they're up on the thing, doing this, playing games, whatever. And so that can be, it's fine. And the people I know that have that, they get along great because they have an understanding. They don't take it personally. They understand that person has a different um, way of living. They have a different circadian rhythm or whatever. So that's important to know that though. Yeah. And then another thing that can cause a lot of problems that I have seen marriages actually end over this is if one person is a saver and they're very, very careful with their money, and the other person likes to spend it. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, and then when you have two spenders. Yeah, that can be a problem, <laughs> that too. That can be a problem, too. The two savers seem to do fine together. Yeah. The if, two spenders, if they have somebody else controlling the money, yeah, they giving might. them advice, then they're way better off. Yeah, true. But, yeah, the two spenders, could, that could be a, a challenge. That could be, a, yeah. yeah. The, the other thing is if, Somebody's a homebody. They really love their home, and they they don't like to go out. Right. Um, that can potentially be a problem yeah. if you have a person that's a social butterfly. Yeah. Luckily, both Freddie and I are social, social. butterfly. Yeah, we're very very social, so we're very congruent that way. Yeah, when Wayne and I met, he he or <laughs> he went and looked at my refrigerator, and I had a bottle of champagne and a piece of cheese in there. <laughs> So he goes, oh, you're not home, Mike. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, it was almost when we were when we were hanging out together and then dating. It's like she was such a social butterfly that I had to make an appointment to go be with her because as a salesperson uh, in, in her job, she was going to all these open houses, going to see all these different um, people, events, events, events yeah. and stuff. And so she lived on hors d'oeuvres. She didn't need real yeah. food. Yeah. And if you were to ask her today, what's your favorite meal? Hors d'oeuvres. Hors d'oeuvres and a glass of wine. Yeah. So <laughs> that can be a, that can be an issue. It we've absolutely seen people do fine with that. I knew a couple that, that he was a tremendous, uh, 
homebody. She was a social butterfly. They were married for a long time. They split up actually for five years, and, but they came back together after that, realizing that they really truly loved each other and they could work through that. And it did. And then, um, then we talked again, again about people that need active, they need downtime and other mm -hmm. people need to be go, go, go all the time, yeah. which is kind of that introvert, extrovert also. Yeah. Are you a go, go person? Do you like to travel a lot? Um, it yeah, was kind of interesting. Yeah. My grandparents, yeah. I mean, they had an incredible relationship, very dedicated to each other. Um, my grandfather and grandmother, they both worked like crazy. They retired early in life. And my grandmother wanted to travel, but my grandfather didn't. And it was, it was really difficult for her because she wanted to share all those adventures and see the world. And, and they'd worked so hard to build their, their fortune. And um, she really wanted to go, but he would only go, he'd, he would go along with it. But after three days, he was packing his bags to come home. Yeah. And so, so that, 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 that was tough. That them. was tough for them. And another one that's a huge challenge is if, if one person is messy and then the one is clean. Oh my God. So like a, a kinesthetic person, most likely because it's all about, they want that comfortable chair to sit in and they want their comfort around them a lot of times they're not like they're not dirty but they're they don't care if you can have a stack of magazines next to the easy chair stuff like that but if you have somebody who's their partner who is clean 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 everything has to be put away in its place like really probably ocd just has to be that way that's that can be a huge deal in a relationship huge so we we have friends that Luckily for them, they're both messy. So <laughs> yeah. It works out perfect. <laughs> works out great. Perfect. Dust, not a problem. Dog hair, not a problem. Not a problem at all. <laughs> and that works out. They have this great marriage because they're both messy. Yeah, and see, for care. Wayne and for Wayne and I, we're we're not totally crazy about it, but we're we're relatively the same. We like a, a yeah. clean home. That's just us. But that's right. something you need to look at because right. it will make it will create problems. Yeah. For, for instance, like for me, because I'm so highly visual and Freddie is more auditory, even yeah. though she is visual, but if whatever I have, because I'm, I love to read books, I love to do research, figure all this stuff out for you guys. I have piles of notes. I have grease boards filled with stuff. And, you know, it's like, <laughs> I know it's hard for her. I just don't pay attention. Well, that's that's it's the his blinders. Room. That's his room. And I've talked to other couples too where where the husband's like Wayne. And so he has his man cave and she just opens the door, throws something in there, closes the door. It's called, the, keeps the, called the hole. The hole. Keeps the rest of the house clean. But that part, that's his space. And that's yeah. what you can do. And it works out great. But just, it's really just, funny though. It's an the, agreement though. But at the same time. You know, for me, symmetry is really important. And for Freddie, symmetry is not as important, no. although she does like things to be balanced and stuff like that. But I mean, I, I'm pretty OCD at times. I'll walk up to a checkout counter in the grocery store and I'll rearrange everything to make sure it's all symmetry put back together just because it bugs the heck out of me. So <laughs> somebody that was messy or, you know, is, is, um, doesn't care. Oh, I'd go crazy. Yeah. I, you know, so you really want to think want these to things think through. Want to go? Is Be it, realistic. Is it worth it? Is it worth it? Is it worth it? Because the reality with your soulmate, the the person, the love of your life, it's like when you get into that choice factor of who you're going to choose to spend the rest of your life. It's not a matter of they're going to be perfect, as no. we all know. Let's be adults about this. It's going to be pretty screwed up. It's just going to be more about, can I manage your <laughs> stuff? <laughs> you know, can you manage mine? Is this something we can manage together? And so that's why compatibility is a, a great really place to start. Important. It's super fun. Uh, you know, we just really can't tell well, you then enough. Schedule, and then there's the people that are really scheduled and the ones that oh, are yeah. spontaneous. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So. Oh, my God. Yeah. I'm a very scheduled person. If like. If if I depended upon Wayne to plan our vacations, we'd be sleeping in our car. 
because it's like not true well <laughs> it would be an exciting adventure because i i once i have those plane tickets i want i like kind of freestyle it a little bit yeah not me not freddie yeah no. i want i know exactly when we're going to be there what's going on i pack three days ahead of time i'm very scheduled all that but see it works for us because we understand he kind of likes me being the travel agent because Absolutely. he really doesn't like sleeping in his car no i've done that before that sucks yeah it's not a fun thing <laughs> you've done it before too and yes, that's why you really schedule yes and that and so but that's another thing to look at though because the thing about the most important thing about compatibility is you have to talk about it right you can't you have to talk about it you have to be aware and that's one thing we have in our in our master class is a an entire we call it the soul soulmate selection uh, shield, which helps you ask all the questions you need to ask to know that can is there are we going to be able to make it or is this something that's like a no go? I right. we this particular quality this person has I am not going to be able to have that relationship with them. Or it's a what we call a humorous tolerance. Right. So when you're going through the compatibility part and you're asking these questions, I mean, there's like, I don't know, 200 questions or whatever you yeah. go through, depending upon your circumstances. As you're going through it, you're going, okay, well, this is this is a want. Yeah. This is a must yeah. have. This is what I'd like. And this is a no-go. So when you're hit the thing about it, when you're consciously you know, looking at that potential partner, you want to know what your no-goes are very early yeah. on because you can get involved romantically. And like we said, the cost of, you know, oh, just being heartbreak. involved with somebody and going through the heartbreak, maybe you even have children or yeah. maybe you go into business together. We work together. And yeah. if we had to break that apart, it would be difficult. I mean, yeah. there's so many issues around it. And then you have extended family on and on it goes. Um, oh, well, it's just just a disappointment. I have a lot of friends that that are on the dating sites. It's horrible. It's horrible. They're just they it's so disappointing. They go on this one date and and, and maybe they think it's going to work out and then they get all excited and say oh i'm taken he really wants me and then they never hear from him again they go they get ghosted they get ghosted and well and it's a cool. swipe that swipe right swipe left you know it's yeah. just like oh it's all visual and blah 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 you know how would you like to i i'm, I'm throwing rocks at it i mean it, it's tough obviously we haven't had to do that. No, I mean, there was no such thing as the internet practically when we <laughs> <laughs> were dating, but yeah. you know, things change, no self but you know, it, it's hard on your self-esteem. It's like, you know, you're a great person, a good person yeah. that wants a relationship. I know that was a case for us. Yeah. And you just go, Oh my God, you know, what does it take? The good news about um, what we teach and what you can learn is you can have a, a clear understanding of who you are and then a clear understanding of what you need and then what are deal breakers and then what needs to be negotiated in between because it will be negotiated. Life happens. Life is change. I don't care how romantically you're involved. It's going to change. There is going to be a power struggle. What we want to help you do is bomb proof your relationship. Number one, get a relationship that's healthy and understand what that actually looks like. What are the attributes? What are the things that you need? So you can, you know, I, I want to say protect yourself, but in a way, just be dis discriminatory. Get in a relationship, give it time, go through the steps that are necessary so that you really know what you're getting into um, before you make that commitment. Super, super important. Okay, let's move on. So NLP questions, here we go. So um, we're a combination of everything. Uh, which one are you? These are quite, this, is, this is the homework that we've got you guys to do yeah. uh, before tomorrow is before we have our second day mm -hmm. is that look at figure out what modality you are. Like, do you see, hear or feel? And then which one describes somebody in your family, which is really fun. You can watch them. Like when I first started learning all this, I would watch people 
like anybody who is leaning forward and walking fast, I knew that was definitely a visual person. Yeah. So they're pretty easy to identify. And then um, uh, which one best describes the most challenging relationship you've had? Because like in my case, where the woman I was teaching, for them, the big challenge was that she was highly visual and he was very kinesthetic. So that that would be a question that they'd be able to answer and go, well, that's a big challenge for us because we're very different. We have so many other things going for us, but that communication style is challenging for us. Well, and then you also, you can get to a place where you really respect that other person and honor them. And so you build rapport with them in the way that they feel loved, right. connection, feel understood, loved. heard. Again, back to that big four, people want to be seen. They want to be heard, understood, and valued for who they are. Um, so let's go on to our next questions. Introvert versus extrovert. Yeah. So those questions, you can just go through that and just ask yourself, which one am I? Yep. Uh, what, what would be perfect for me? Do I want to be with another introvert, which would probably be the, the easiest way to go, but it just depends on all the other qualities they have because there's a lot yeah. of other qualities. So if that's like the only thing that's really a problem for you guys, you can figure it out from that. And that um, what's, what, uh, what would your nature be easy to be with or challenging and why Yeah, for yourself? Yeah. So that's another great exercise. And um, then of course, a lifestyle question. Lifestyle questions. Uh, are you action oriented or are you more relaxed? Uh, are are you a night owl or are you an early bird and ready to rock and roll early in the morning? Yeah. And have you been in relationships with people that are the opposite of you lifestyle and, and what's the challenge there? Or were you guys able to figure it out? Yeah. Or it worked for you? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, are you a social butterfly or not? That's a biggie. You know, yeah. you really want to know that, you know, what about your religious preferences? Yeah. That can be a real uh, tough one for some people. Some people have very specific ideas about, you know, the way they want to approach their spirituality and, and um, demonstrate their religion. That can be a, a really big thing. You know, the other thing is like, are you a spender? Or are you a saver? <laughs> well, and then like <laughs> have, what combination of both? Yeah, I have friends that are very, very athletic. They like to ski and hike and do all that kind of stuff. For them, that that's what they want in a partner. They want right. somebody who does the same thing as they want to share that with them. But sometimes, you know what? If that person is great in every other way, but they're kind of a schlub and they don't like getting out, go hike with your friends. Right. Because they, they've got everything else going for them. One of the things that in a modern society, what we've what we're what we've noticed, and they've done studies on this, is we're looking a lot of times unrealistically. We're looking at that partner to be the end all for us, right. and we tend to cocoon. We want that partner to read our mind, know our <laughs> or all our emotions, be there for us, love us the way we need to be loved, and they should just automatically know that. And that's really unrealistic because you're always going to have unmet expectations. So in the old days, you lived in a village and you would have a selection of people and you wouldn't look to see to get all your needs met. So this new society that we're living in is tougher. It's tougher on your partner because you're expecting them to, to, to have all these qualities that, that other people in other times you know, you would go out in the community and you would have great friends and you would go out, have meals and live your life and maybe go hunting with or, you know, you would make your quilts. I don't know. <laughs> but, you know, you would you would have well, more you had a support. Village. You had a village. You had a village supporting a relationship. Right. And the roles were very um, laid out for you. And it's totally changed. Um, but. You just have to really be cautious in a way that's, you know, is this person healthy? You know, am I healthy and can we make it? So, so, all right. Question. So we're going to go back. Corey we're going to go back and let me get out of this. And stop this. Where am I, Freddie? There we go. 
Okay. We're back. We're back. <laughs> We're back. So, um, so anyway, that's the, that's the today's um, challenge. We want you to go out there, start using this stuff. We're really excited about day two. We're going to talk about the different communication styles. There's four of them that we're going to first talk about, but then there's a fifth way to um, communicate. That's called the, the fifth conversational style. It's super important for your relationship to go long-term and find fulfillment in it. It's super important. And we're going to talk about that tomorrow. So be sure to show up tomorrow and we're looking forward to seeing you. And and let us know, do you guys have any, currently have any questions you'd like us to answer? And let's we'll see, see if we can find them. Let's see if we can find them. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. So anyway, um, we're just waiting to see if anybody's got anything going on. Anyway. And we'll answer questions tomorrow too. When we first start out the second day, we'll answer some questions that you may have today, especially after you've gone and done your homework and seen how that works. And then we will answer some questions tomorrow for you too. Great. So we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.